You should not give in to evils, but proceed ever more boldly against them. Whenever I think I can relax at last, someone hastens to brutally point out to me that I have fresh work to do. It's time to save the world again. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Ed Greenwood's Stormlight. Stormlight is a 1996 novel by Ed Greenwood, and before Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive, there was a Forgotten Realms novel, uh, number 14 actually in the Harpers, but it's really a standalone uh, called Stormlight. This, and actually thanks to T for making that meme at the, at the beginning there. Um, the prologue introduces us to Lord Athlan Summerstar in Firefall Vale, looking at a sunset behind the Thunder Peaks from the edge of the Hillock Forest, and that's in Cormier. For your information and uh, we are told this will be his last sunset though he does not know it yet it is flammer rule which is a summer month and the year of the sword which is 1365 dr athlon is a harper acquainted with storm uh silverhand uh who's the bard of shadowdale and immortal by the way uh and he has some magical powers um, particularly with the magic book in his tower that actually proves his doom uh, then we meet Storm, uh, fighting a Cambian and Marilith with Maxer. The latter is her lover and is doomed similarly to Athlan, or is he, I guess, uh, Salune, a ghost and sister of Storm's, comforts her during these presaging events. Uh, Storm is a daughter and chosen of Mistra, Lord, Lady of Mysteries, and Goddess of Magic. Uh, she has silver hair and is immortal as far as aging goes, but she can die from, you know, physical violence or harm. She's also a member of the Harper Organization. Hence why it's in this series. Other characters include Fairy Oz, the Summer Star, Dowager Matriarch of the Noble Family, Ringlar Barrist, the Family Seneschal, um, Ergoleth Rowan Mantle, the local Bold Shield, a commander for the Purple Dragons, uh, and more. Uh, and it starts bloody, and it gets bloodier very swiftly, and it doesn't really let up. This is Greenwood's kind of penchant, you know, to be very violent and immolating. Uh, there's casual nudity as well, which is typical of Greenwood too. Um, and on the second chapter, uh, you kind of you know, go in for yet another murder mystery set in Cormier. Uh, I've read several at this point. Uh, one where the Harpers, and particularly Storm, have an um, interesting involvement with the local Purple Dragon authorities. As Storm is to be bold and takes her job very seriously, but polite where appropriate. She is nonchalant to nudity, saying, Look all you want, I'm not ashamed of this body, but it still amazes me how many men are. <laughs> it's just funny Greenwood stuff. Uh, and the opposite of a prude, I guess. I do wish we had um, as many naked men uh, as we do women in, like, Greenwood stuff. Um, but he kind of has this, like, free love vibe going on in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, it does happen, I guess, to naked men, but just, you know, not that much, I guess. Uh, maybe I should do a study and see how often men and women are naked in, in Greenwood's Forgotten Realms novels. Anyways, uh, the story is rather straightforward. Uh, sure, we get some ideas of the realms for, from its creator uh, information and certain flares that other authors don't really have when they're writing in the setting. But he is rather controlled in this tale and is pretty straightforward. It's a very bloody one with some power hungry, um, you know, people and others that are just simply misguided. Pretty typical, again, for his stories. There's some quotable lines in this one and small details that actually come back to matter, which is nice to see in a murder mystery. And that is generally uh, divisive, I think, um, as an author. He does fluctuate in his focus and ability um he's pretty focused here uh, there's not too many absurdities and asides but he's really not tame he's never tame and this one made me chuckle uh, or i guess was a giggle a couple times uh, it's quite funny uh there's some bold jokes there's a panty raid anyway it's also horrifying and full of immolation and gruesome deaths again typical greenwood it's written in a different manner uh, this is in a sense kind of described more like horror and it can be rather chilling at times and for a setting a book with so many novels, they do largely, you know, well, uh, they're not always the best. There is some comeuppance in this uh, for, for nobles and Cormier here in this case, and not everyone in power deserves it, and it's pretty obvious. And sometimes mighty mages are just as tired and careless as the rest of us, as Greenwood tells us. Also, Storm, as a seemingly immortal character, is very different than the bored and melancholy variety of immortal character. Uh, she may be a tad mad, though. And lots of madness and death, again, that might be um, a complaint and a compliment, I feel like. Uh, Greenwood is not afraid to kill off characters, but many I like die, and many we don't get enough time to know well also die, so it doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal. And for those interested in the god Bane, this has some interesting bits concerning him after his death during the Avatar Crisis and before his rebirth in 1372. I wasn't really expecting him, didn't know about him. 
Uh, and Greenwood doesn't give us much obscure um, realms lore in this one, again, besides some local geography that's interesting if you want to go to, like, a obscure place in eastern Cormier. Uh, but it does provide some strange spells, like the Finger Sword and Blood Lightning, which I think are cool. Anyways, I'll end with this quote, and it says, I don't want to rule anyone, so I don't. I do love growing things and being able to walk among forests and gardens, so I do. I love music and meeting people, so I harp. And the harpers want to help people and fight evil by turning out secrets before they become bigger or darker things. They don't want to rule either, and so don't. Anyways, I think that encapsulates the this kind of silly, not like super deep thinking, and not even like honestly like the best written stories normally by Greenwood. But there's generally some quote at least one in a Greenwood story that always makes me, you know, it hits me right in the feels and often he makes me teary eyed. So anyways, anyways, Lean from Williams, I see my catch next time.